Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 6 of the course on multivariate data mining methods and applications. The title of this lecture is multiple regression model introduction. Now, one of the main objectives of data mining is predictive modeling. Regression models or multiple regression is an important tool for predictive modeling. The basic idea is you have a set of input variables and on the basis of those input variables you want to predict an output variable. Not just fitting the model, it is also important proper selection of the variables or proper evaluation of the model or properly predicting the output variable on the basis of the model. So, in this lecture and in subsequent lectures, we will consider the multiple regression models and different problems associated with the multiple regression models. We consider multiple linear regression model. In multiple regression model, our study variable or it is also called the output variable or dependent variable depends on a set of explanatory or input or independent variables. So, you have a set of input variables and then you have output variable and your output variable depends upon this set of input variables. Now, focus of our attention is what is causing variation in dependent variable? If changes in some input variable lead to changes or variation in output variable also, then obviously that input variable is important for predicting the output variable. The changes in that input variable are definitely affecting the output variable. So, that input variable has some kind of information about the output variable. So, we must include that input variable in your model. So, this is issue is important what is causing variation in dependent variable. Then which variables are mainly responsible for variation in dependent variable? So, which set of variables is important? So, that we may include those variables in the model. Now, here are some examples. Say, scientists might be interested in observing the effect of say different amount of fertilizers, different levels of irrigation and different types of soil on crop yield. So, these are your input variables or you can say prospective input variables and this is your output. And uh, your 
objective is or you are interested in observing the effect of these input variables on output variable. Whether actually these input variables are affecting the output variable or not, these variables are affecting the crop yield or not. And if yes, then how much, in what way these input variables are affecting the crop yield or the output variable. The selling price of a house, it may depend upon the location of the house. In some localities, houses are more expensive, in some localities, houses are not so expensive. House area obviously it depends upon the house area, whether house is facing the sea or not, or whether the house is uh, closer to some popular shopping malls or popular shopping area or not. Then number of bedrooms in the house, number of bathrooms in the house, how old the house is, etcetera. So, you may form a set of input variables or a set of variables which may affect the selling price of a house. So, this selling price is your output. and these are all your input variables. Now, for the multiple regression analysis purpose, we will consider two different cases. The first case is random x case and uh, the second case is when x variables are fixed. So, first we consider the random x case. Now, suppose you have r input variables or r input random variables and x is the vector of input variables and y is a random output variable. So, both input variable as well as output variable are random variables and y x 1, x 2, x r are jointly distributed with mean say expectation of x is mu x since you have r input variables. So, the order of mu x is r cross 1, expectation of y is mu y, then the covariance matrices are sigma x x, sigma x x is the variance covariance matrix of x or you can say that sigma x x is equal to expectation of x minus mu x x minus mu x transpose, then sigma y y denotes the variance of y which is equal to sigma square y and capital sigma x y denotes the covariance between x and y. So, actually sigma x y is equal to expectation of x minus mu x y minus mu y. Notice that uh, y minus mu y, this is a scalar, this is of order 1 cross 1. So, ultimately sigma x y is a r cross 1 vector. Now, suppose y is predicted by a function f x of x. So, if y is predicted by f x, then the loss function is denoted by L y f x and this loss function is, it is a measure of prediction accuracy. The actual value of y and this is the predicted value of y. So, it is a measure of prediction accuracy. 
and if you take expected loss, then you get the risk function, we denote it by R f. So, R f is the measure of quality of f as predictor. You, if you are using this function f for predicting y on the basis of x, then R f is the measure of quality of the predictor. Now, suppose you take this squared as a loss. So, we take y minus f x whole square as your loss function. We take the difference between actual value of y and the predicted value of y and then you take a square of this. So, this is your loss function. Then the risk function is expectation of y minus f x whole square. Now, we write this expectation in the form expectation over x, expectation y given x, y minus f x whole square given x. Actually, here we are using the result that expectation of a function say g x y. This expectation is over both x and y can be written as say first we take the conditional expectation y given x g x y given x and then we take the uh, expectation over x the unconditional expectation over x. So, we can write R f in the form expectation x, expectation y given x, y minus f x whole square given x. Now, this is actually mean squared as a criterion. Now, for given capital X equal to small x, we have y minus f x equal to, you can write it as y minus mu x, mu x is the expectation of y given x plus mu x minus f x. So, mu x is expectation y given x of y and this is called the regression function of y on x. Now, we take a square of both sides of this equation 3 and then we take conditional expectations the conditional expectation y given x. So, a square of both sides of this equation is say expectation of y minus f x whole square given x equal to small x is equal to expectation of y given x y minus mu x whole square plus mu x minus f x whole square. We also get the cross product term. The cross product term is y minus mu x and then you have mu x minus f x. And if you take expectation y given x, now this is a constant. So, you can take this part outside the expectation sign and the conditional expectation of this part is equal to 0 because of this relation. So, this cross product term vanishes, this is equal to 0 and uh, basically you want to minimize the risk function R f x with respect to f and uh, it is minimized when f is equal to f star x, where f star x is equal to mu x, because for f x equal to mu x, this term vanishes and uh, this term does not involve f x. So, when you focus is on minimizing all f x with respect to f or you want to choose that value of f for which r f x is minimum, 
you do not have to bother about this first part, it does not involve f, you just bother about this second part and the minimum possible value of this second part is 0 and you obtain 0 when f x is equal to mu x. So, f star x equal to mu x which is equal to expectation of y given x, y is the value of f which minimizes r f x. Then point wise minimum of r f x is say r f star x equal to expectation of y given x, y minus mu x whole square given x equal to small x. Again, when you take expectation of 6, we have R f star equal to minimum over f capital R f, which is equal to expectation of y minus mu x whole square. Now, mu x is the best predictor of y given x equal to small x under MSc criterion. Now, suppose expectation of y equal to mu x is a linear function of x 1, x 2, x r. So, mu x is equal to beta naught plus x 1 beta 1 plus x 2 beta 2 so on plus x r beta r or you can say that y is equal to beta naught plus x 1 beta 1 so on plus x r beta r plus u where u is equal to y minus expectation of y. If you take the difference of these two, then you get mu u. u is the random error or disturbance term. Then beta naught, beta 1, so on beta r, these are called the regression coefficients. Here actually, this beta naught is the interceptor and beta 1, beta 2, so on beta r, these are called the slope coefficients. Now, why these coefficients are called uh, slope coefficients? Now, suppose you differentiate expectation of y with respect to x 1, then what you get? you simply obtain beta 1 or in general suppose you differentiate expectation of y with respect to x j then you obtain beta j. So, basically beta j gives you the rate of change in y with respect to x j. That is why this beta j is called the slope coefficient or suppose you have just a single variable. So, expectation of y is equal to beta naught plus x 1 beta 1 and you plot this line. then you obtain the equation. This is the equation of a line and you obtain this straight line and the slope of this straight line is beta 1 or in other words, suppose you replace this x 1 by x 1 plus 1, then how much expectation y changes? the expectation of y changes by the amount beta 1. So, a unit change in x 1 brings a change of beta 1 in y. Now, we write x equal to x 1 x 2 x r transpose beta equal to beta 1 beta 2 beta r transpose. Then we can write the mod 7 is expectation of y equal to mu x equal to beta naught plus 
x transpose beta. Further, we write z equal to 1 x transpose whole transpose. So, basically z is equal to 1 x and alpha is beta naught beta transpose. Then expectation of y is equal to z transpose alpha. Now, suppose s alpha is equal to expectation of y minus z transpose alpha square and uh, your objective is to obtain the value of alpha which minimizes s alpha and suppose alpha head is the argument minimum over alpha s alpha. So, alpha head is the value of alpha for which s alpha is minimum. To obtain this value, what we do? We differentiate s alpha with respect to alpha and then we set this differential coefficient equal to 0. So, we differentiate it with respect to alpha this portion. So, what we get expectation minus 2 times y minus z transpose alpha and then we differentiate this part actually we do not get minus here now we get minus sign here when we differentiate minus z transpose alpha. So, and then we obtain z here. and we set it equal to 0 and then we take minus 2 outside the expectation sign. So, we get minus twice expectation of z y minus z z transpose alpha equal to 0 and then we write alpha equal to alpha head. So, alpha head is equal to in fact, we get expectation of z y equal to expectation of z z transpose alpha head and from here we obtain alpha head equal to expectation of z z transpose inverse expectation of z y. Now, alpha head is equal to beta naught head beta head transpose whole transpose means alpha head is equal to beta naught head beta head. So, using this expression for alpha head, we can obtain the expressions for beta naught head and beta head and to obtain these expressions, we just write expectation of z, z transpose equal to say expectation 1 x and then you have 1 x transpose which is equal to expectation of 1 x transpose x x x transpose. Now, expectation of 1 is 1 and then you have mu x transpose mu x and expectation of x x transpose is sigma x x plus mu x mu x transpose and then we require inverse of this matrix so we can obtain the inverse of this partition matrix which is equal to 1 plus mu x transpose sigma x x inverse mu x and then you have minus sigma x x inverse mu x minus mu x transpose sigma x x inverse and then you get sigma x x inverse here and then alpha head is equal to expectation of z z transpose inverse 
which is equal to 1 plus mu x transpose sigma x x inverse mu x and then you have minus sigma x x inverse mu x here minus mu x transpose sigma x x inverse and then you have sigma x x inverse here into you take expectation of z y which is equal to mu y because we write z equal to 1 x. So, expectation of z y is equal to y and x y and then we take expectation. So, we get mu y here and sigma x y plus mu x mu y and then we multiply this matrix with this vector and finally, we obtain the expression mu y minus mu x transpose sigma x x inverse mu x y sigma x x inverse sigma x y. So, this is the expression for beta naught head and this is your beta head. So, you get beta head equal to sigma x x inverse sigma x y and beta naught head equal to mu y minus mu x transpose and here you get sigma x y. Now, in general mu x mu y sigma x x and sigma x y are unknown. So, what we have to do? We take observations from the joint distribution of y and x 1 x 2 x r and on the basis of those observations, we estimate these parameters. So, these are the observations. You have n observations on y's and x's. So, x i j is the i th observation on the j th independent or input variable i equal to 1 to n j equal to 1 to r and this is your data set. You have i i d observations we have capital x i is equal to x i 1 x i 2 so on x i r transpose. Then we write this data matrix this is n cross r data matrix as say x 1 1 x 2 1 so on x n 1 and so on x 1 r x 2 r so on x n r. So, this is n cross r matrix y equal to y 1 y 2 y n transpose uh, y is n cross 1 vector. Now, suppose we define a equal to i n minus 1 upon n l n l n transpose where l n is n cross 1 vector with all elements equal to 1 and uh, in the last lecture we have observed this result. If we pre multiply any n cross 1 vector y by l n transpose and we divide it by n then we obtain y bar the mean of y's. So, similarly 1 upon n l n transpose x is equal to x 1 bar so on x r bar which we write as x bar transpose. Now, to estimate mu x and mu y, we use uh, for estimating mu x we use x bar and for estimating mu y we use y bar. Further, in the last lecture we have also observed that if we pre multiply y by a, then we get this vector y minus y bar ln or we get 
a vector of observations as deviation from mean and we denote it by y c. Similarly, if we take a x, then we get a matrix of observations on x's as deviation from their respective means and we denote it by x c. So, x c and y c these are deviation from mean or mean centered forms of x's and y's. So, we have centered the observations mean centered. Further, we estimate sigma x x by n inverse x c transpose x c and sigma x y by n inverse x c transpose y c. Now, in these expressions for beta naught head and beta head, we replace mu y mu x sigma x x and sigma x y by their estimators. So, we replace mu x by its estimator x bar mu y by y bar. We estimate sigma x x by n inverse x c transpose x c. We estimate sigma x y by n inverse x c transpose y c. So, if we replace uh, the parameters by their estimators in equations 14 and 15, then we obtain the following estimators for beta and beta naught. Say beta head is equal to x c transpose x c inverse x c transpose y c. You simply replace sigma x x by n inverse x c transpose x c. So, you get this term and then you replace sigma x y by n inverse x c transpose y c. So, ultimately n will cancel out and you get this term. Further beta naught head is equal to we replace mu y by y bar and mu x by x bar and then you have beta head here. So, we get these estimators for beta naught and beta. Now, we consider the fixed x case. So, suppose these input variables are fixed in repeated sampling and you have observed y conditional on x 1, x 2, x r. Again, uh, we take the observations in a similar manner as we have taken in the previous case. So, you have this matrix of observations on x's and this vector of observations on y's. And then we write y i equal to beta naught plus summation j equal to 1 to r beta j x i j plus u i, i equal to 1 to n. Here u 1, u 2, u n are assumed to be i i d identically independently distributed with mean 0 and variance sigma square. Now, we use the matrix notations. So, we can write the model 19 in the form say so, y equal to l n beta naught plus x beta plus u and then we write z equal to l n x and alpha equal to beta naught beta transpose. So, actually alpha is beta naught beta. Further expectation of u is 0 and expectation of u u transpose is equal to sigma square u i n. Then your problem is to estimate alpha. For estimating alpha we use the method of least squares and the resulting estimators are called ordinary least squares estimator of alpha. So, suppose alpha is estimated by alpha head 
and E equal to y minus z alpha head is the residual vector. Now, in the method of least squares, we obtain alpha head by minimizing the residual sum of squares, which is equal to s equal to summation i equal to 1 to n e i square. Or you can write summation e i square as e transpose e and then e is equal to y minus z alpha head. So, you get y minus z alpha head transpose y minus z alpha head. And to obtain alpha head, you have to minimize this s with respect to alpha hat. Now, we write k equal to r plus 1, so that z is of order n cross k. Now, when z is of full column length, we assume that z is of full column length. That is, length of z is equal to k then the OLS estimator of alpha is given by alpha head equal to z transpose z inverse z transpose y. To obtain alpha head, we write s in the form say s equal to y minus z alpha head transpose y minus z alpha head and then we write it equal to y transpose y minus. Now, here we can write s equal to y transpose y minus alpha head transpose z transpose y minus y transpose z alpha head plus alpha head transpose z transpose z alpha head. Now, these two terms are equal. So, you can combine these two terms and write them as say, minus 2 times alpha head transpose z transpose y. So, you get this term y transpose y minus twice alpha head transpose z transpose y plus alpha head transpose z transpose z alpha head. Then in the next term first we write this term alpha head transpose z transpose z y. In the middle term what we do? We take z transpose z z transpose z inverse here. Then we add one term say y transpose z, z transpose z inverse z transpose y here plus y transpose y and since we have added this term, we subtract this term here and then we combine these three terms and we can write these three terms as alpha head minus z transpose z inverse z transpose y whole transpose z transpose z alpha head minus z transpose z inverse z transpose y plus v, where v is equal to y transpose y minus y transpose z, z transpose z inverse z transpose y. Or you can also write it as y transpose m y, where m is equal to i n minus z, z transpose z inverse z transpose. Oh, if you consider this equation 23rd, then s is minimum when this term is minimum, because this term does not involve alpha head. So, mainly we have to focus on the first term, this term. Again, Suppose you take any k cross 1 vector c, then c transpose z transpose z t c is always greater than or equal to 0 and it is equal to 0 if and only if c is equal to 0 and the reason is that the matrix z transpose z is positive definite. So, this quadratic form is always greater than or equal to 0 and it is equal to 0 only when c is 0. So, the minimum possible value of this s is alpha head equal to z transpose z inverse z transpose y. Further, if we replace the parameters by their OLS estimators, we can write the model 20, which is this in the form y equal to l n beta head naught plus x beta head plus e. 
then we pre multiply equation 26 by a and you observe that a l n is equal to 0. Now, a is i n minus 1 upon n l n l n transpose. So, if you pre multiply a to any vector it gives you the vector as deviation from mean and mean of this vector is 1. So, you get 1 minus 1 which is 0. Further a e is equal to e. So, you obtain a y equal to this term becomes 0 you get a x beta head plus e. Now, z transpose e is equal to 0. So, this implies that x transpose e is also equal to 0. Actually, what is e? e is equal to m u and z transpose m is equal to 0. So, since x transpose e is equal to 0, we have x transpose a y equal to x transpose a x beta hat or you write it as a x transpose a y because a transpose a is equal to a square which is equal to a, a is symmetric as well as idempotent. And then you can write the right hand side in the form a x transpose a x beta hat. Now, this is equal to x c. So, you get x c transpose and this is y c equal to x c transpose x c beta hat or beta hat is equal to x c transpose x c inverse x c transpose y c. Now, we consider this equation y equal to l n beta hat naught plus x beta hat plus e and we pre multiply this equation by 1 upon n l n transpose. So, on the left hand side you obtain y bar equal to then you have 1 upon n l n transpose l n. Now, l n transpose l n is equal to say you get 1 1 1 here then 1 1. So, ultimately this is equal to n and then you are dividing by n. So, you get beta head naught here and when we pre multiply x by 1 upon n l n transpose then what we get? We get the vector x 1 bar, x 2 bar, so on x r bar and then we write beta head in the form beta 1 head, beta 2 head, so on beta r head. So, ultimately this term becomes x 1 bar beta 1 head plus so on plus x r bar beta head r or you can write beta head not equal to y bar minus beta 1 head x 1 bar minus beta 2 head x 2 bar so on beta head r x r bar. So, this is the expression for the estimator of slope coefficient beta naught. So, in this lecture we have discussed the multiple linear regression model which plays the very crucial role in predictive data mining. And we have considered both the cases when x is uh, random as well as when x is fixed. We have discussed uh, the method of least squares, how to estimate the parameters of the model or regression parameters of the model in both the cases. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss the properties of the uh, OLS estimators. So, I am going to stop here. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Chitwan Lalji, a PhD student of Health Economics under the supervision of Dr. Debian Pakrashi uh, from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. In one of my essays, I'm interested in understanding the relationship between consumption of fruits and vegetables and various health indicators. Health indicators, both subjective and objective health indicators like mental health, self-assessed health, various measures of blood pressure and various measures of cholesterol. Uh, measures of blood pressure like systolic and diastolic BP, you have your incidence of high BP, MAP and incidence of high MAP. And as far as cholesterol is concerned, I have tried to concentrate more on total cholesterol, good cholesterol and incidence of high cholesterol. Now before I go on to what have been my major contributions and various policy implications, I would like to briefly tell you about the policy initiatives of WHO and various countries. The WHO, that is the World Health Organization, it started with a campaign of five a day. That is, you should have five portions of fruits and vegetables per day. That would be approximately, you could say, 400 grams of fruits and vegetables. Now, a portion, before we go further, I'll just tell you what exactly is a portion. One portion is equivalent to a medium-sized apple or one small glass of fruit juice, which is approximately 150 milliliters and uh, maybe three teaspoons of vegetables. So, uh, the WHO went with a five-a-day campaign, which was further taken up by various countries. Countries like UK, Netherlands, Germany, Norway, they adopted the five-a-day policy, while some went for expansionary dietary policies, like France, Australia, Canada, Denmark. So, for example, Australia, it went for go for two plus five policy, in which it said that you should consume five por two portions of fruits and five portions of vegetables per day. And USA went for a policy of fruits and vegetables, more matters. That is, you must consume more and more fruits and vegetables. Now, irrespective of these expansionary dietary policies and dietary propagations, it has been found that only 28% of women and 25% of men they actually meet the recommended dietary norms of five a, por five a day portion. So the major contribution of my work is firstly to find an association between fruits and vegetables, whether there exist a relationship between fruits and vegetables and health indicators. And if there exist, whether if due to heterogeneity in the data, so I will be doing it according to age, by gender and by uh, your weight. So, apart from that, I will go for policy recommendations in which I, will, I am basically studying uh, how much fruits and vegetables matter. Apart from that, which type matters more? So, for that, I have taken data from the Health Survey of England. Health Survey of England is an annual survey which takes uh, data, which con conducts information regularly on demographic and socioeconomic characteristics. You have your lifestyle behaviors like an individual smokes or doesn't smoke, alcohol consumption, you have your sedentary and physical activities and you have various health uh, indicators also which have been collected. Uh, so uh, before I go on to what exactly is my research, I would like to concentrate more on fruits and vegetables like what kind of questions were asked in the survey. Questions like what kind of fresh fruit do you eat? Did you eat any dried fruit yesterday? Don't count dried fruits in cereals, cakes. Apart from that, for vegetables, they asked how many tablespoons of vegetables did you eat yesterday? So approximately after this whole survey was conducted, data was converted into portions of fruits. And uh, like for example, three, por three tablespoons of vegetables is equivalent to one portion. So data was converted and provided to the users, that is us from the UK Data Health Survey. So the major con contributions of my paper is that I found a strong negative association between uh, intake of fruits and self-assessed health, then various measures of uh, blood pressure like mean arterial pressure, high mean arterial pressure, high blood pressure, systolic and diastolic BP and your total cholesterol. Apart from that, I have found a strong positive association between consumption of vegetables and good cholesterol. So it is recommended in a way that if you want to control your blood pressure, you must consume more and more fruits. And as far as vegetables are concerned, they impact your good cholesterol. Apart from that, I went in for a falsification test. A falsification test is basically conducted to know whether the model that you have adopted and the conclusions that you are drawing are not spurious. So if uh, a falsification test is done to know, in a way it is tested by seeing 
an indicator, a health indicator which is not being impacted by your consumption of fruits and vegetables. And then see, we see whether there is significant result or not. If there is no significant result, that means your model is good and your results are non-spurious. So what we did is for falsification test, we took ear complaints and infectious diseases. Now ear complaints like if you are deaf since birth or you have some kind of imbalance, body imbalance, that is not being impacted by your post consumption of fruits and vegetables. And we did find insignificant results. Apart from that, infectious diseases like HIV, A, HIV AIDS, etc., we found similar insignificant results, indicating that our, for, uh, that our results are not spurious, non spurious. Apart from that, we went, uh, since there was a, a lot of heterogeneity in the data, like uh, by gender, by age and by weight. We, can, we did the regression analysis. We found results which stated that as far as uh, fruits are concerned, it impacts a male's health more than a female's health. So it is basically said a, a man should consume more fruits to impact his health, whereas as far as vegetables are concerned, they impact a women's health more. But this has been only seen as far as cholesterol is concerned, the various measures of cholesterol like total cholesterol, good cholesterol and your incidence of getting high cholesterol. Now after this, we went in for a policy implication and in the policy implication, we found, we tried to find two policy implications, what matters and exactly how much portion matters. So as far as how much portion matters, we have found that on an average, five or more portions of fruits impact your overall health, that is your self-assessed health, your MAP, your incidence of high MAP and incidence of high BP. But if you want to have a good mental health, so you can optimize your mental health by consuming three or four portions of fruits as well. And similarly, has, uh, as far as self-assessed health and total cholesterol is concerned, an individual must consume four to five portions to optimally have the impact of consumption of fruits. Apart from that, vegetables have had a very little impact on your health. It only impacts your incidence of getting high MAP and high BP. And uh, you, it's seen that only it impacts when you consume five or more portions of fruits. So an optimum consumption of five or more portions of fruits and vegetables are recommended. But fruits have a more impact on your overall health, on various measures like self-assessed health, mental health, your various measures of blood pressure and various cholesterol levels. Another thing that we find is which type of fruit matters. It has been seen that all size fruits, they impact your self-assessed health, your systolic and diastolic blood pressure, your mean arterial pressure, your high BP and incidence of getting high MAP and high cholesterol. But we find that uh, as far as frozen fruits or canned fruits are concerned, they have a, they help in regulating your incidence of getting high MAP or high BP, but it has a trade-off that means there is something negative happening, it reduces the good cholesterol in your body. Apart from this, it, if, you ha if you have an incidence of getting high cholesterol, it is recommended that you must consume fruit juices because it has a impact in reducing your probability of getting high cholesterol. And uh, dried fruits, they impact your self-assessed health. As far as vegetables are concerned, very little impact has been seen. It has only been seen in case of a uh, uh, portion of salads and its association with self-assessed health. Another thing that they have seen is vegetables in composite, they have an association with good cholesterol. So overall, my research basically says that there is an association between consumption of fruits and vegetables and various health indicators. And um, it is highly recommended that an individual in order to be healthy must consume five or more portions of fruits and five or more portions of vegetables per day. But fruits have a more impact on your overall health. Apart from that, all size fruits, they have a better impact on your overall health, your mental health, various measures of blood pressure and cholesterol. So thank you. Hello everybody, now uh, the discussion which I would try to um, make uh, talk to you is about the excitement which I always feel and I am sure you will also reciprocate as I proceed and when you do the course 
is in the area of multivariate statistical problems and multivariate statistical analysis. So, what we mean by multivariate? So, we know that statistics is a, is a subject where you ha have a lot of data, you try to analyze that using different type of techniques like estimation problem, MCMC techniques, then forecasting and the area of time series analysis and then try to basically find out the best forecasting tool which you have such that you are able to gain the maximum amount of information from a set of data. Now, in the recent past as we see that multivariate statistics has, has, has really increased in a, in, in a very exciting manner and if I trace back to history it has been going on slowly for the last about 70, 80 years, but now the time has come where it is being used in a very big way and the techniques which we all know, but which are being utilized with new vigor are in the area of say for example, canonical correlation technique, in the area of factor analysis, in the area of conjoint analysis, in the area of clustering analysis, in the area of multidimensional uh, scaling techniques, structural equation modeling, be it in the area of finance, be it in the area of engineering, be it in the area of social sciences, be it in the area of economics, such that you are able to gather the the information from the data in such a way that it really gives you some useful set of information. Now, in the recent um, past, there has been also an explosion of large and complex data sets, but added to that there has also been a, a commensurate increase in the computing and the statistical techniques. So, obviously, the question comes that if the statistical techniques are there for small, so called small data, not the big data, not the, the, the data which is of terabytes and, and, and so on and so forth, where you use different type of computers to state the data, the question obviously comes that are those statistical techniques really relevant when we use them in the big data sense. The question is they are not always relevant, they may not give you the best results. So, what we are seeing in years to come and, and I feel very excited about that is that how would the new tools which we have already learned in statistics in multivariate statistical analysis are being redrawn, are being say for example, remodeled in such a way that they can be utilized along with the techniques of computing in a very nice manner that we are able to garner the information from big data very successfully and very nicely in such a way that they are able to portray a sense of information which we all long to have from big data, be it in say for example, medical sciences, be in the area of finance, be it in weather forecasting, be it in transportation, so on and so forth. So, obviously, it means that students, participants who are in a position with some brief mathematical background to take multivariate statistics and statistical tools as a subject in this program are assured are a very exciting future where they can use these tools to, to both gain the knowledge as well utilize them in a very best practical sense such that they are able to do some justice to the information which is given to them and get the best information from the data sets. I wish all the participants in this course the best of luck and I am sure they will also reciprocate the excitement which I have for this type of courses. Thank you.